Hey, what's up guys? Matt Laidlaw here from Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. So I'm gonna be doing another Spotlight bike today. So we got an FXDR here, which I'm pretty excited about. I haven't done a whole lot of custom FXDR builds. So this one here, customer of ours, did some really nice tasteful things on the bike to really clean it up. Like clean up that rear dovetail fender piece on there that a lot of people were saying needs to go. And just some cool like lighting. And you got the titanium exhaust on here as well. So. We're doing a walk around on this bike and taking it out and ripping it around and letting you know what I think about it. All right guys, so let me take you on a walk around around this 2019 FXDR. I wanna thank Eugene for allowing me to feature his bike on the YouTube channel here. So as many of you guys know, the FXDR was the brand new model that launched in the 2019 model year. Harley Davidson made a performance oriented cruiser and put it on their relatively new soft tail chassis that came out just the year prior in the 2018 model year. And this bike kind of shares a lot of features of like the breakout with more of a performance oriented twist on it. So starting off here, you've got the LED turn signals in the front. These are Rizoma. This bike is a combination of Rizoma and Dominion Collection stuff. So those turn signals, they replace the deluxe style turn signals in the front. Front end is relatively unchanged. You got the dual disc brakes, inverted front end, the 19 inch forged aluminum wheel that Harley Davidson ships this bike from the factory with. Bars are just your clip on bars that is kind of unique novelty to this bike. We'll get into that more in just a minute. You got the air cleaner here. This is the Screaming Eagle intake heavy breather. The end cap there is kind of a new style that Harley Davidson launched at the beginning of the 2019 model year. I'm a big fan of this personally but it's got to go on the right bike which the fxdr is definitely the right bike for this type this style of an air cleaner you guys it's, it's more of a performance oriented high volume intake the next thing that i'm a personal really big fan of is the screaming eagle titanium muffler this muffler was designed specifically for the fxdr it reduces the weight by about 50 percent when compared to the stock triangular muffler on there which i think equates to about 20 pounds or so now here's the big change that i think every fxdr owner really needs to consider he changed out that tail piece that plastic fender piece Piece that hovers over the rear tire. He's able to do that with a combination of these Rizoma rear turn signals here, the LED turn signals that are really small in profile. You also got this Rizoma uh, license plate side mount that allows you again to get rid of that that license plate mount that comes uh, on the bike from the factory. Rizoma is an Italian-based company that makes really nice parts, a really high-end quality and manufacturing process. He's also got the Dominion Collection nut caps on the rear tires there or I should say on the, on the rear axles there. And of course you got that cast aluminum swing arm that Harley Davidson ships from the factory. The FXDR really, there's some weight savings attributes and features on this bike that I think a lot of people overlook. Uh, Harley Davidson really spent a lot of time in redesigning some things like the tail section to reduce weight. You've got the Dominion Collection foot rider foot pegs and the shift peg as well on here. Again, more Dominion Collection stuff that he used throughout the bike to kind of tie everything together. I'm a real big fan of the Dominion Collection stuff, by the way, we've done a lot of builds in house that we utilize the Dominion Collection stuff on. Gas cap is also Dominion Collection, which I'm actually a really big fan of the stock cap, gas cap on this bike. But again, since he's going with that theme, I think it was appropriate that he used the Dominion Collection. The mirrors as well, you got the, the grips as well, all Dominion Collection on here. So all black to match, of course. So the bars are really unique on this bike, guys. They're, they're a forged aluminum clip-on bar that just really clips to the top of the fork tubes there. And I'm a big fan of them. I think that if you wanna really stick with the whole uh, racing profile and image of this bike and less is more and weight reduction attributes, then you stick with the bars that come on this bike. You can have however, take the plate off the, the, the front and access a traditional mounting system for bars if you ever want to change the bars on here. But I've seen a few where people did like T-bars and other things on the FXDR, and I, I just don't think this is the bike for that type of style. Of course, that's just my opinion, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of just the stock bars. A lot of this bike, is, I just prefer stock. I mean, you pay a little bit more for this bike too. I think this bike is like $21,000, $22,000, and that's because Harley Davidson kind of went all in as far as making this a very race-inspired a performance cruiser style bike and so you know just a few small touches like eugene did here i think is just enough to really set this bike off you can see there that really clean 240 millimeter rear tire there it's just and it kind of protrudes out of the back too just because of the shortened you know tail section of the bike as well that doesn't have any metal uh, struts or anything or, or rear fenders so just a really nice exposed rear wheel just kind of give this a very muscly profile to it so yeah big fan of the bike i really like the exhaust choice as well not the loudest exhaust in the world. It is extreme and eagle, but it is very tasteful. And again, you've got you know carbon fiber covers on there and end cap there, and you know it reduces the weight from the stock muffler. And so yeah, you got a combination of really cool styling on here, uh, some additional weight savings on the bike as well. And so yeah, I'm just a big fan of of this. And you know it's interesting on the FXDR. Uh, this bike at our dealership. Uh, hasn't been the best seller. And I think a lot of people will like to weigh in and, and argue why it is or isn't the best seller. I'd, I'd be curious uh, if, if people from other dealerships are watching this video, if, if you want to comment and, and let us know how this bike is selling at your dealership. But it, it's funny because 
I don't know if it's a matter of styling or price tag, why this bike hasn't sold, you know, exceptionally well at our dealership, you know, especially for being the very first year this bike's in production. But I, I just think that a lot of our customers here in East LA are more of a traditional style, Harley Davidson lovers. And so this, I think this bike is more of a modern uh, performance bike that's, you know, a lot of guys, especially in the Harley world, they're not always about the performance. Although Harley Davidson gets criticized a lot for not having higher performing bikes. But a lot of our customers, at least at our dealership, I think just prefer more of that classic look. And, um, you know, we sell a lot of baggers too, like street glides and road glides well, Rogue Glide actually is our number one bestseller bike this year. But yeah, I would be curious to hear you guys' comments on if you love the FXDR, if you don't, and if you don't, you know why that is. But anyways, let's get out and ride this bike and see what she's got. You know, I gotta say I've taken out the FXDR several times now and, and kind of done more than just around the block, but you know, two like decent prolonged test rides. And I gotta say that every time I take out the FXDR, I forget about how good of a bike it is. And when I'm out there on the road, I just think to myself, wow, this actually is a really good performing Harley Davidson Cruiser. Uh, the first time I took out this bike was with Andrew and Nick. We did a review video on this bike when it was first launched. We went up Azusa Canyon, which has a lot of, you know, twisties and you, know, you can really, you know, test the bike out, test the leaning, I'll test the acceleration in and out of turns and how it, you know, holds a line through a turn and the FXDR does extremely good. You know, I did a video at the dealer meeting at the beginning of the 19 model year and I enlisted the help of Ben Wright, who's the chief engineer on the Softail platform. Really, really smart guy, as you know, you'd expect from the guy that's kind of in charge of, of making the soft tails. But he gave us a lot of information that I think is information not everybody knows or picks up on or really learns about. And you know, I was a skeptic at first when I saw this bike. I, I fully admit I was kind of a, a skeptic. I felt like the styling was a little bit out of touch with what we want, especially on the West Coast. I'm not as in tune with you know what's popular on the East Coast or the Midwest, but I am very in tune with what's hot on the West Coast. And I just knew that this wasn't going to quite hit the mark just from a, a visual standpoint but you know I was also kind of a skeptic on the standpoint of you know okay is this bike really going to be a performance bike you know a performance cruiser now just looking at it you know it looked like a, a breakout on steroids basically or the drag race inspired bike taken from kind of the DNA of a breakout and a couple things that you know, we're, we're interesting that Ben Wright pointed out is the, the reduced trail on this bike. It's got about 25 millimeters of reduced trail, which really helps out with you kind of the quickness and snappiness of, you know, entering and exiting turns. It's kind of the overall agility of the bike. And it also has a 19 inch wheel, a forged aluminum wheel down from a 21 inch wheel, which, you know, basically it reduces the, the inertia and the, the, the forces that's generated by a bigger wheel. So, you know, those two things really make a big difference in the handling. This bike handles a lot better than the breakout. And um, another thing that I don't think many people know is of all the soft tails, the FXDR has the greatest lean angle as well. And I don't mean to turn this into a, a sales pitch for the FXDR or an FXDR review video or anything, but you know, I, I just think that this bike is very underappreciated. Uh, and with, with sales being pretty lackluster, at least at our dealership, I can't really speak for the whole country, but at our dealership, sales being very lackluster, I just feel like this is probably the, the number one, number one most underappreciated Harley Davidson right now. And I only said that once before, and that was with the with the old Fat Bob before they they changed the new frame. I feel like the new Fat Bob was a lot better than the old Fat Bob, but people appreciate it. People know that the new Fat Bob was an amazing motorcycle, and people are figuring it out. And people are, are starting to buy them now. I think people have kind of gotten over uh, you know the butt hurtness of the Dyna going away and realizing, wow, Harley Davidson actually built a lot better bike than the Dyna. And people are getting them now, but it's a whole different rant. Yeah, the FXDR. Every time I get off it, I'm always very surprised at just how well of an overall handling, accelerating bike this this bike really is. I mean, this bike is made to be ridden aggressively. Uh, I feel like the other thing that people ask me a lot is, okay, well, did the FXDR replace the V-Rod? My answer to that question would be no. And then the explanation behind that would be that 
The FXDR is significantly different than the V-Rod. The V-Rod is a completely different platform, you know, with the water cooling and the overhead cam and everything. This is more of a traditional Harley-Davidson air-cooled V-twin 45 degree angle uh, bike, uh, as opposed to the 60 degree water cooled, like I said. Now, from the category or a niche of being a performance bike, okay, I think that's probably about as far as you can draw the comparison. You know, both bikes were kind of long and lean and had really fat rear tires on them. Uh, the V-Rod actually not until about 2009 did they start putting the 240 millimeter back there. But you know, a late model V-Rod, I guess they had they had comparative uh, features, but I really wouldn't say that it, it replaced the V-Rod. You know, from from a standpoint of this bike versus the Fat Bob, you know, this this one does have more of a, a drag characteristics. From stoplight to stoplight, I felt like this bike took off better. You know, there's things like the air box that this bike comes with, and just the way the exhaust is tuned and everything is just a higher volume. And I feel like this is the best accelerating bike out of the whole that Harley Davidson makes right now. And this thing is just really fun to launch off the line. Now in the twisties, I feel like the Fat Bob still has it covered, but this bike really surprised me. It surprised me a lot just because I've you know, ridden the Fat Boy, ridden the Breakout quite a bit. And although those bikes can do it, they can go through the turns, no problem. It does take a different type of uh, skill set and it does take a different type of uh, muscle memory. And it is kind of a, a slower transitioning bike. Whereas this bike, you can flip from corner to corner pretty quickly, actually, especially for you know what it is with a little bit of a rake on it and that fatter rear tire on there. Yeah, I don't know if it's the price point or if it's the styling, but yeah, th this bike just doesn't get the love that I feel like it should get. Now, now actually commenting specifically on this this bike with the accessorization that has been done to it. You know, a lot of the stuff on here is cosmetic, and so you know, talking about it, you know, how it performs and everything, not much has changed. Uh, I do feel like the the muffler sounds good. I like it better than the stock sound. You know, it's probably about 10 to 15 percent louder. If you're buying exhaust just for volume, probably wouldn't go, go with the titanium muffler. But the titanium muffler on this bike, to me, is a must. If I had one of these, I wouldn't put any other exhaust on here except for that muffler. It's just, it looks amazing. It's a genuine Harley Davidson part. It's a part that's only made for this bike. You know, it's going to perform, and, and everything is going to run perfectly, which this bike does. And so, I'm just a big fan. And I typically, I do like my bikes a little bit louder than even the, the Screaming Eagle products will get it but on this bike, I, I would compromise the volume a little bit just to have that titanium pipe on there. I, I absolutely love that pipe. I wish they would do a titanium pipe for like a bagger and you know, and, and do more of those weight reduction parts for the baggers and do more performance bagger oriented stuff. But again, that's a whole nother subject. Yeah, and, and the, the tail kit for me is a non-negotiable. If I bought an FXDR, I would definitely, and the Rizoma kit that's on this bike is as good, if not the best one I've seen. So yeah, I would, I would definitely go with a kit like this. I just, I love that really fat exposed tire in the rear that just really has nothing around it. No shrouding, no fenders. It's just really, really clean. It just looks really aggressive. So yeah, I'm a fan of that. And then all the other touches he did with like the grips and the foot controls and stuff, I feel like was was really good. Uh, something that would be really cool on this bike as well is if you know we did a stage kit. Uh, we actually have a customer right now who's doing an FXDR and he's gonna be doing a, a stage three kit on it, which I think would just be an amazing bike to ride. To just be like a rocket ship. Yeah, I can't wait to see how that bike turns out. Maybe I'll do a test run on that bike because this bike stock is already pretty dang fast with that 114 in it. The, the power to weight ratio is is real strong for a Harley Davidson. So yeah, that's about it, guys. You know, I, I could go on and on about just kind of more stuff about the FXDR and not really specifically this bike, but you know, just the bike holding a turn. I feel like the inverted front end, you get benefit out of that. Uh, there was a, there was a second back a second ago. I I actually came to a quick stop and actually felt the, the ABS engage. The ABS is really good on this bike, which is pretty typical uh, to all the Harley Davidsons. The Harley Davidson ABS is good. I don't always get to really experience that system because I'm not always trying to make panic stops all the time, but I hit some slick uh, road there a second ago and, and the ABS kicked in. on the levers and the ABS just kind of takes over and, and it stops you and you don't have to worry about wheel skid or overcorrecting, you know, a fishtail or a skidding front end, which, which is really nice. I, if, if I were you guys, if you're looking for a Harley Davidson, you want kind of everything that Harley Davidson gives you with the fit and the finish and the look, the style, the customization ability, then 
uh, I would check out the FXDR, maybe go to your local dealer and, and test ride it because this is an underappreciated bike right now. But yeah, give me you guys' thoughts on this bike and uh, give Eugene a thumbs up if you felt like what he did was was nice and if you're if you're digging this bike. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching as always. Uh, make sure you tune in on August 20th uh, in the morning, probably around 9 or 10 in the morning because I will be live streaming from the, uh, Milwaukee where they're going to be announcing the 2020 model year and I'll be showing you guys all the new stuff there. If you're looking for a new bike in Southern California, hit us up. We have absolutely no added dealer markup at our dealership. So come see me or my team here at Laid Lost Harley Davidson. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.